and I would like to um, invite you for the new video series Why? about Tarash defense. And what Tarash defense is, this is an uh, active answer against d4 in the first move. d4, d5, you know, start is just like in the Queen's Gambit declined, c4, e6, and now, if that to be honest, it doesn't matter, is Black going to play knight c3, or knight f3, or g3, e3, or any other popular move, you can always play c5, and this c5 move, uh, that opening, it is called Tarash defense. But the main move, white usually plays knight c3 uh, in the position, and black of course plays c5, right? And you just need to know that Tarash defense, that opening was invented uh, by Zygbert Tarash, famous German grandmaster, at the end of the of the 19th century and uh, beginning of the 20th century. And this Tarash defense, uh, he loved it that much that he even put an exclamation mark close to, uh, on the first move c5. And first game happened in 1888, Kirchner was playing white and Tarash played black. He played c5 and won, maybe not easily, but, but, but finally, finally Tarash, Tarash won. And at the turn of the 20th century, the most popular move was e3, immediately e3, uh, or c captures d5, pawn captures d5, and then e3. This is kind of a very uh, meaty way of, of, of playing. Uh, nowadays, it's, it's slightly different, but we will go into that. So let's take a look at the first game that happened in Tarash. White plays e3 because white wants to defend d4 pawn. Uh, black develops knight to f6, okay, according to every uh, basic principles of playing in the opening. Knight f3, knight c6. You can see that that position is very, very symmetric. And in that position, white captures c captures d5. White captures pawn at d5. And white wants to create an isolated pawn, central isolated pawn at the d5 square. And now, of course, there is an option for black to capture with knight. That opening is called semi tarash or half tarash. Uh, but the problem with that with knight d5 is that it blocks the bishop. So if you, if, if you want to play an active way, capture with a pawn, just like tarash did. Pawn captures c5, bishop captures c5. You can see that the d5 pawn it is an isolated pawn. And if you are going to play tarash, you just need to get used to that because this is uh, isolated pawn happen, happens in every tarash line. Uh, Kishner played bishop e2. Of course, black followed the principles of playing in the opening castling. The same white. And tarash developed bishop to f5. And you can see that that position. Despite of that isolated pawn, black has got very active minor pieces. Take a look at, at those bishops, right? Take a look at those knights. Knights attack center in a really good way. And now compare it uh, to, to the white uh, pieces, right? Bishop cannot move, right? Because here is e3 pawn. If white wants to develop it through, through b3, it, it takes a lot of time. The next player that invented something new against Tarash was Polish, very strong player, Rubinstein. Uh, and he realized that it would be a perfect idea if white can move bishop to g2 because uh, bishop takes control, bishop attacks uh, d5 square. And at the d5, there's going to be an isolated pawn. So uh, c captures d5, pawn captures d5, knight f3, of course. It protects d4 pawn, okay? Knight goes to, knight goes to c6, and now Rubinstein's idea, g3. Very strong bishop at the g2, and that idea, it solves another problem, which is developing of the dark square bishop. Because now, pawn is not at e3, it doesn't block the bishop, right? So bishop can go uh, to g5, for example. So with that idea, and that, this is the main idea, main plan for white uh, until today. Okay, black also has to develop the pieces. Knight goes to f6, bishop goes to g2, and bishop is 7 Of course, castling, in, we need to know that in Tarash defense, king safety is uh, very important, not only in Tarash defense, but also both sides usually make castle very, very fast. And now bishop g5, and that move, has got an idea to put the pressure over that knight at f6. Uh, because that knight is, of course, defender of the most important thing, that d5 pawn, that is going to be an isolated pawn, right? So one white wants to remove the defender of that isolated pawn. And in that position, classical way of playing was bishop e6. But that bishop is not very, very good here, because take a look, it, uh, it defends the pawn, right? But it's it's like a big pawn here at the e6, right? It, it, it hasn't got uh, many possibilities at the square. This is why later, in the 1980s, in this position, Kasparov, yeah, thanks Kasparov, world champion, uh, finds popularized that idea c captures d4. And black can play in very, very active way. And you need to know that every position that happens in Tarash, uh, they are connected with an isolated pawn. So it means that you just need to use common plans for an isolated pawn. So if you play with an isolated pawn, you have to try to push that pawn forward. You have to try to create an attack with minor pieces. This, th those are two main ideas. And if you play against an isolated pawn, this is what your opponent is going to do. Your opponent will try to block that isolated pawn and attack it. And of course, opponent will try to exchange pieces, especially exchange minor pieces. Because that position with an isolated pawn, that constructor, if only major pieces remain at the position, white has got a big advantage. So you have to remember to do not trade down uh, minor pieces. So this is about basic ideas. In the next episodes, I'm going to talk about uh, main lines, of course, with bishop g5. Also, I would like to talk about lines with d-capture c5, early d-capture c5, and later d-capture c5. Uh, I just want to talk to you about the lines with e3, so classical lines, and also with some uh, lines. White also plays e3, but white develops dice square bishop uh, very, very early. And later, we are going to discuss main ideas, so pushing isolated pawn, attacking with minor pieces, and I just want to show you some couple traps and tactics that happens in the, in the Tarash defense. And in the end, I just want to discuss a couple notable games played by Kasparov, right? So you will learn a lot about Tarash defense during this course. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and hope to see you uh, on the next episode. Thank you very much. Bye. See ya. Right, so see ya. Nope.
Nope. Ooh. I mean, it's all right. Ooh. Ooh. Ten lessons about the tarot, okay.